<laughs> Affiliate World Barcelona. Oh my God, guys, I'm so fucking pumped. Uh, this one is going to be my best talk yet. You got me in top shape. Uh, we're going to talk about some Google stuff. It's going to be really good. I'm going to specifically focus on GDN. Um, how many of you guys know me? Anyone here knows me? OK, so I don't even have to tell you who I am, right? OK, thank you for coming. Uh, we're about to basically wrap the first day. Uh, let's get it started. We're going to talk about the Google Display Network. And I'm going to give you my $20 million recipe for running really high level campaigns. OK, this is the information you need to kill it on Google. I've been running on Google for tons of time. Um, uh, I have an agency. I am an affiliate and also a business owner. Uh, I own 10 different companies. Basically, we're doing a bunch of stuff anywhere between lead gen to e-com. We're doing branding for our clients. We're running uh, lots of verticals right now. Uh, I also own uh, Boost Fitness Center, which is a fitness center that I opened up two years ago in Tel Aviv. We're making it into a chain right now. It's going to explode. It's, it's something really big. Uh, so if you guys know me, you know my personal story is that basically this industry, and this is why I'm so excited about it, is I, I basically build a whole life around this industry. My friends are from the industry. Um, the knowledge that I gained, basically, I met some girls even from the industry, believe it or not. Uh, and I get basically to travel the world. And the main thing with me is that this industry basically helped me and my family get out of a financial, uh, basically, a bad financial situation. And, and that's, here. that's why I'm here with you today. Uh, I opened up almost a year ago Trepo, which is a boutique. Uh, affiliate network that I really take on affiliates and we, we we really strategize on how to kill it, how to optimize, how to scale campaigns. Um, so that's me. You should listen to me because I am fucking right, okay? All the time. I'm not fucking joking, okay? I've spent tons of money inside Google to give you those tips that I'm going to share with you today, okay? So I spend a ton of my own money, a ton of my clients' money. Um, I tried a bunch of different strategies and then some combinations in between them to give you those tips. OK, so let's go, Affiliate World. I'm really glad the room is filled. I feel the energy. <laughs> OK, so we're going to cover a bunch of stuff. So the first one is why GDN, OK? The pros, the cons, why do you need to run there? We're going to talk about how to build the campaigns, how to optimize, and how to scale it. I made it super simple. I'm going to share with you something that I developed specially for Affiliate World, OK? It's a method methodology that I'm basically used using on my campaigns right now. It's called the Wolf's Pyramid of Optimization. It would give you the right secret sauce, the correct way on how to optimize. That's a big thing, OK? And I'm, I'm giving you my word, and I'm promising you right now, if what I'm telling you right now doesn't change at least one of your campaigns inside Google, forget I ever existed, which for some of you might not be such a big deal, right? <laughs> OK, so let's start. We're going to talk about why GDN. OK, so what I like to look at GDN at uh, is basically in a way where it's a multi-platform. OK, so why a multi-platform? Because you can run different angles through it. OK, it's not like native when there is a specific angle, a specific way that you run, OK? Inside GDN, you can choose which angle you want to attack. You can do it like in a sort of native way where you don't really disclose who you are and who's the, the brand or company that is selling the product. Or you can do it and say, hey, I'm, I'm the guy that actually sells it, OK? So you can really do a lot of stuff with it. Basically, GDN works for everything. And basically, GDN, for those of you who don't really know Google, it's basically the Google Display Network. It works for everything, from branding to lead gen to e-com, which is amazing. Uh, it converts for almost everything if you have enough patience, knowledge, and deep pockets and time. It's not like Facebook, OK? So it's not Facebook. I, I, we just made the, the Affiliate World interview outside, and I was telling Philip 
listen, Facebook made people super lazy because they, they just tend on like rely on the, the, the Facebook pixel, the, the algorithm, which is amazing. And you just run a campaign, you open it up, it's like uh, 30 plus US, stuff like that, and it converts, right? The pixel finds more and more and more people. So inside Google, it's not really like that, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, also, with Google, if you know how to manipulate and run the system, uh, you can turn in uh, any basically warm traffic campaign, which is like a remark remarketing campaign. After it gets some conversion data, you can turn it into a cold traffic campaign and use that conversion data to really bring new cold traffic. And also, I've made my biggest ROI there this year. So that's also a reason. Uh, it has lower, more stable CPCs. And unlike Facebook and other platforms, it's fucking linear, OK? How many of you guys know how you open up a campaign, and it's converting good, and then it's not converting good the other day, right? You know what I mean? The CPA, the CPLs go up, go down. With Google, when it's converting, it's converting. It's likely to keep giving you the same conversions over and over and over again, OK? Oh my god, I feel so small on this big stage. Oh my god, I'm like, like, like a minion came out of like, I don't know. OK, so uh, like I said, it takes more skills than Facebook. So you really have to basically sit, get data, spend some money, and then optimize. OK? We're going to talk about how, build, how to build a campaign. So building a campaign inside Google. Uh, is, is, is not something that easy also. We're going to talk about how to do it and how not to do it, OK? The right way to approach. And it's a pretty wide range question. What should I do and what shouldn't I do, OK? No one really knows basically uh, what's the correct way, but I'm going to give you my top five like wolf tips on how to build your campaign correctly and what are the common mistakes that most people do, OK? So the first thing is that I always start, and I'm talking about only GDN here, guys. OK, this is not the search network. It's not YouTube. It's not the video network. I always start with basically two campaigns, one for desktop, one for mobile. And I like to really lowball the bids. I start with super low bids. The reason why I'm doing that is that GDN could spend a ton of your money really quick. OK, so if your, your bids are high, you, you would spend a lot more than you even told the system that it's limited to. So if you say the, the daily budget is $100 and your, your CPC bid is, would be a dollar, you would basically see that after an hour it spent more than $200. So it's super important to start with low bids. Low bids also really protect you from mistake to, mistakes that you have done. So for example, if you forgot to exclude mobile apps, so you're getting tons of really low CPC uh, traffic, uh, and, and basically, if you, if you lower the bid, then at least you would get a lot of traffic, and, and then you would be able to change that mistake. The second one is that you always have to segment geos, OK? And I'm going to talk about it more uh, down the road. But basically, if you're running a campaign in, this, in the in US, for example, Consider that each state is basically going to give you different results, OK? And you want to be able to make those bid adjustments and stuff for every and each state, OK? So if you're not doing that, you've opened yourself up to a, a situation where basically one state might not get that many impressions. And it's because your competitors already realize that that state is getting good traffic. So they, are, they have already segmented it, and they already got uh, uh, higher basically bids there, OK? So uh, third tip would be to exclude mobile app categories. So you used to be able to do it through just excluding a specific placement, which is uh, AdSense for mobile apps. I don't know who in here has been advertising on Google enough to remember that. But uh, you used to be able to do that. And now, basically, what you need to do is get inside the exclusion page and then just choose those categories so you don't get uh, that specific traffic. And I've talked to some guys down at the conference, and some guys even uh, talked to me while I, I'm consulting a lot of people. And uh, we were talking about the, the, the option and the opportunity that there is inside mobile app traffic. So what I do is I usually open up a separate campaign for mobile app. I even lower the bid even more there. And I start optimizing because it's a different type of traffic, you know? So you want to exclude the, the mobile apps that is like giving you like really 
shitty basically traffic and you want to choose the ones that are really good for you. Okay, so as, uh, just like I told you right now uh, with the mobile apps, what I like to do is I start by excluding the unknown okay, audiences. It's basically uh, the, you can exclude them by gender or by age. And you can basically open them up in a different campaign. So that would only work for geos that have large scale. Okay? If you already uh, narrowed yourself to a specific targeting and you know that you want to get a specific type of audience, that, that would be a big limitation because most of the traffic would be an unknown traffic. Okay? Google, they don't really know basically which uh, age and data for, for each profile of user. The, my, my, one of my biggest or more special tips would be using observation lists inside a campaign. Okay, so observation lists is basically when you choose a specific targeting and you add them. Okay, it could be just like a, 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 an affinity or just like in market or interest that you add inside your campaign and you don't really target it. So Google would know which uh, click and conversions came from which specific targeting. Okay. Uh, my tip for you, just add as many uh, targeting options to the observation lists as possible. Why? Because then you would be able to know if that targeting works for you. Where did this uh, conversion basically came from? And then you can make any manipulation that you want. You can open a, a new campaign and target that specific uh, in-market audience, for example, or interest that converted. Or you can decide, OK, this is getting me some conversions, but the, the bid must be too high. So I'm going to lower the CPC, and I'm going to get to, to try to basically get the CPA or CPA whatever campaign I'm running down, okay? Uh, am I running too fast? Is that okay for you guys? Uh, is the content okay? Give me some feedback, guys. It's not television. <laughs> Woo! We're, we're fucking finishing this, the first day. Okay, it's like 50% over. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it's going to help you understand the audience better. It's going to help you scale better. And it's going to... No, it's going to lower your CPA or CPLs. <laughs> okay, so one more thing with building. Okay, just before we move to the, the, to the methodology and everything that I uh, basically told you that I'm going to talk about, I never use automated targeting. And I was talking about it on the breakout stage, on the smaller stage. I only, basically, it used to basically look uh, like the, the, the first one, and now it looks like the lower picture. Uh, but I said I'll just post them both because some, some people still see the old uh, layout of accounts and the design. Uh, and basically, I do that uh, with everything that's automated inside Google, meaning I only switch into automation whether it's uh, ads rotation, whether it's, uh, I don't even know, uh, bids and stuff like that, only when I have a ton of conversion data uh, for at least a month. OK, so that's what I like to do. OK, we're getting close to the optimization methodology. Uh, and by the way, guys, if any of you have any questions, I'm doing it to get to know you. So add me on Facebook, add me on Instagram, grab me today or tomorrow if I don't fall asleep or at the party if I'm not too drunk. OK, so, so basically, when I started running inside uh, Google and specifically inside GDN, I faced a big challenge, OK? Uh, it didn't matter which strategy I choose. I couldn't really find the correct way to optimize, OK? So I, I didn't know at the time how I'm going to optimize. Do I kill placement first? Do I kill ads? Or maybe a specific uh, uh, time range inside the day, OK? Um, I, I was afraid, basically, that if I'm going to kill a specific ad or a placement, then I, I'm, I'm really not giving it whether it's the ad or the placement, for example, the fair chance of performing, OK? So on one hand, you don't want to waste just money, and you're not here to prove anything, right? You don't want to just test uh, uh, with a tons of clicks uh, for each ad or placement or whatever, or a time in a day. On the second hand, you don't want to kill any time of the day placement campaign or targeting uh, without really giving it a fair chance of proving, because then you can kill your best performing potential ad, right? You know what I'm talking about? Anyone experiencing those kinds of questions? Great. Uh, so the, the, what, what I developed, basically, is my own strategy on how to do it, OK? 
Guys, this was fucking written in blood. I'm not joking. It's not like the shit that people just would say, okay? I'm actually the guy, the geek, that is sitting around running the campaigns, okay? I'm <laughs> so use that, okay? It's going to save you money, I swear to God, okay? This is going to be a step-by-step -step strategy that is going to basically change the way you optimize, okay? Uh, and, and just like I told you, I'm willing to commit that you guys can go back tomorrow, change your campaigns, run this specific strategy, and it's going to change it. Okay, so let's start with the basics. You start by rotating everything, okay? Nothing automated by, by Google. You start with accelerated delivery, and you wait until you have at least 15 conversions, or you spend at least $150 uh, dollars per campaign. Of course, that changes according to the payout, according to the conversion rate, but we're gonna talk about it in a second, okay? So basically, you need to look at two things. You, you're going to look at the average CPC and you're going to look at the conversion rate, okay? That's what you wanna, that's how basically you, you're getting your cost per lead or, or acquisition, right? So what you do is you take your CPC, you divide it by your conversion rate, you're getting the CPL, right? Okay, so for each step that I'm going to show you right now, you multiply the CPL or CPA that you got to that specific step. This is the minimum that you have to spend before you decide basically to make any changes to that step. Changes could be excluding it from the campaign and segmenting into another campaign, bid adjusting, killing it, whatever you decide, okay? And that's also the order of optimization. So if your CPL or CPA is, for example, $12, for each ste step that you see right now, you multiply the CPL or CPA according to that step, okay? So placements time three, ads time six, and so on and so on, like you see, okay? So you have the, the, the minimum amount. So when I'm talking about placements, I'm talking about a site or an application. When I'm talking about an ad, uh, ads, I'm talking about a specific creative that you guys are using, and it could be a responsive ad format, the, which is something that is running right now in beta, or it could be just a normal ad. Uh, and when I'm talking about time, of course, I'm talking about a specific hour or a range of hours, right? Okay, so basically that means you don't stop any placement before it has spent at least $36. And I'm, this is just an example, guys, yes? I just like put on some numbers to show you how I work, basically. And for example, any hour of the day, if we have a $12 CPA, CPL, then you don't kill any hour of the day until it has spent 180. And this, of course, gets a lot more complicated when you segment a lot, a lot of campaigns, basically, and you have multiple states, multiple geos, multiple targeting, because you have to run the numbers over and over and over again. So just like I told you guys, I can't stress this enough, okay? This is one big shortcut. Uh, basically, take a picture of it and use it in your campaigns. And if you have any questions, uh, like ping me in, in, on Facebook or something like that, I'm going to give you the option of taking photos because I see some of you are doing that. Great. Okay, so um, basically, I thought that in the short time that we have together, I'm going to give you like two quick tips on how to scale, okay? so. Uh, the first one is after getting at least 20 conversions on inside a specific city, what I do is I exclude it from the main campaign and I open it up in a new campaign. So you constantly have uh, basically optimization stuff and, and you basically always, always make changes to the campaigns. You always have work. Of course, it depends on the CPL, but I just gave you like an example. Also, one big thing, when you do that, when you open up the new campaign, don't forget to reset and normalize all creatives and bids, okay? That's super important because you don't want to carry anything from the old campaign, okay? Uh, the second one is scaling geos. Okay, so what I do is basically I create a filter where I look at the average position, where, for example, if I'm running a search campaign. So I'm looking at the average position inside each state or city, and if I know that the average position is bigger than uh, three, for example, 
uh, unless that maybe specific city or geo didn't convert at all, I would start bid adjusting it. Okay, maybe give it a higher bid, maybe make some decisions according to that specific campaigns. Just remember the fact that that specific city has an, a higher average position means that more people are bidding on that specific city. Okay, it means that the audience is there. It's a good hint on where to start bidding. Uh, remember when I told you about basically turning warm traffic into cold traffic? That, that sounded like a complete nonsense when I first said that. But basically, uh, one of my best tricks, like if there's one thing to take from here tonight except from the, the methodology, the optimization methodology, is basically running a remarketing campaign, letting that campaign convert like hell, and then turning the same campaign without changing anything into something Google calls aggressive targeting, okay? That was one of the biggest uh, maybe game changers that I've made to my campaigns and it, I, I've been killing it with the, that strategy, okay? The campaign, if it converted uh, enough, con if it has enough conversion data, basically it's going to give you so much more conversions. Uh, and, and what you do with the remarketing campaign is don't forget just basically duplicating it and make, making sure you have a remarketing campaign that's running. Uh, let's get, we're getting close to the end actually. Um, so hopefully you guys would have some qu questions. <laughs> but uh, okay, I'm going to give you some wolf tips, okay? My first wolf tip, I, I don't know, you guys remember that I used to have those ugly yellow slides, so I changed it, but I decided to keep those ones just so you would remember me again. Okay, so what I do with geos is basically I start digging inside a specific, uh, it doesn't matter if I'm running inside a state, then I'm looking inside cities, and basically I'm starting to bid adjust, okay? But my rule of thumb is basically I'm, I'm bid adjusting 25% high or low, lower bid, basically, okay? So the, the thing is that if you feel like you have to bid decrease or increase the bid by more than 25%, it means basically that you either have to segment that specific geo or city outside of your current campaign and see how it reacts, or just exclude it, and basically that, that's, that's what you should do. That's my rule of thumb. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just like watching every city. I'm seeing whatever that means, and then I'm making decisions according to that. And sometimes, yeah, I would test a, a bid that might be higher or lower, but I, I just want to see how it reacts on a certain time. My second wolf tip is custom intent, okay? You guys have to use that basically technology that Google implemented, okay? Custom intent is all about finding those guys that are inside the search network, but finding them inside, uh, basically targeting them and getting that specific traffic inside the display network, okay? So if you are running a campaign that has like really high CPC, like the legal sector, okay? The legal sector in the States could get up to like $700, $800 per click, okay? So what you want to do is create basically a, a list of campaigns, and I know I'm not really <laughs> promoting the legal sector here, but um, basically, once you enter a list of brands, a list of specific URLs, or just generic keywords, that would Google would create a list that you can then target inside the display network. Okay, so each person that basically uh, uh, searched for any specific uh, keyword or brand that you have listed inside. Uh, would start seeing ads, okay? Um, basically, I don't know how much time I've spoken, but I'm done. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much. Affiliate World has been a family to me. You guys are more than amazing that you came here. It's not obvious to me. I'm just like a media buyer from Jerusalem, guys. Thank you so much. I know it's the end of the day. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully, you guys have uh, some questions, and someone is going to pop off the stage soon. Oh, my God, Chad. <laughs> ah, good job. Another round of applause for more. So we've got some Slido questions in, but don't forget to start throwing them in there if you have any questions. Let me sneak up here. Why the wolf? Where did that come from? <laughs> um, actually, um, some, sometimes I tell the story that I just saw Leonardo DiCaprio inside the Wolf of Wall Street, and back then I thought it was cool. 
uh, and I decided to open up my company without really thinking about the fact that I even need to invoice people. Right. Um, but the, the, the real story behind it is that uh, growing up in Jerusalem, in Israel, which is the second largest, uh, the second poorest city, uh, we didn't really have a lot of money. So I had to listen to my mother, tell her sister in the middle of, middle of the month that uh, we are running out of food, basically. And uh, we had to watch the refrigerator empty out. Yeah. And back then I decided, okay, I want my mother to have fun. I want her to eat in places, fly out to places and stuff. And I'm going to be a millionaire by the time that I get to, to 30. Yeah. And back then I didn't know that it's going to take me 10 months or so. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I felt like the wolf is like, uh, I'm just like so obsessed about media buying that, you know, I can, I can basically, if you guys want to stay, I don't mind even talking about it for the rest of like the day, like forget <laughs> affiliate after left. hours. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Why not using automatic bidding strategies such as uh, Target CPA, Target ROAS, Google will do all the bid modifiers for you then. So why not? First of all, it's not fun. No, I'm <laughs> joking. Um, seriously. Uh, first of all, when you do target CPA and when you do target ROAS, remember that a lot of settings that you've bi basically initially built inside the campaign change. For example, uh, device bid adjustment, a, a lot of time Google would reset that. So just remember that when you're making that change, you, you sometimes you start getting traffic from, from devices that you didn't want. Um, to be honest, the fact that Google is just cookie-based and not profile-based, like Facebook, yeah. that just takes so much data for Google to really understand which traffic converts and which traffic is good for you. So that's why I don't really like using that. My personal experience with those automation tools and targeting and bidding haven't been that good. And once you change to that specific target, uh, way of bidding or, or targeting, a lot of times you can't really go back. The campaign isn't going to convert. So what I would suggest, if you are keen on like, trying to use Google's AI and automation thing, is basically trying to open up a new account without touching the old account. It needs to have a new credit card, a new domain, a new everything needs to be fresh. And then start to basically yeah. try that out. Yeah. No, it's good feedback. Okay, why did you start a gym? So yeah, your, your first brick and mortar. Did you, did you see how I looked last year? I lost yeah. some weight. Hey, yeah, you're looking That's sick. why. No, I'm joking. Uh, I, I, I just felt like I, I wanna really see how, you know, I've been getting leads for so many, uh, as an agency, yeah. for so many different clients. And I, first of all, I felt like those clients are totally banking on me, mm -hmm. basically. They are making a lot of money through, uh, through my job. And second of all, I, I felt like uh, I had a good opportunity because I mostly invest in people, mm -hmm. I invest in partners and partnerships, and I felt like it was a good opportunity where people yeah. are into that. So. Yeah, I mean, it's what Jason was talking about earlier today, is about building sellable assets too. You're actually building out your own brands in a sense, so it's mm -hmm. a smart move. You, if you're just starting out on Google, is $100 a day enough? And what offer would do best with that? Kind of a broad um, question. So that's a pretty wide range yeah. question, yeah. but uh, I would say, first of all, um, it really depends, are you doing lead gen, are you doing e-com, what is the payout, let's how high? Let's take lead gen as an example. Okay, so with yeah. lead gen, I would say, <laughs> really in general, that 100 bucks would be enough to start testing yeah. and start making changes maybe to the campaign after a while. Yeah. But remember that, uh, first of all, if you are doing lead gen, then you are dependent on on like a, a call center that needs to get the leads and stuff. So yeah. maybe it's better to start off slow anyway. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah, that, that's what I would do. Okay, maybe. cool. What do we got next? Do uh, you we, missed, we, we missed the accelerated delivery question. Not that I want to. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> how about this? Uh, Let's talk the top one. Do, do you see a significant difference um, on the performance by passing conversions back to GDN? How significant is it if where, it does? Where, where, where did you see the question? Top one, the one that says, oh. let's party. <laughs> um, difference uh, on the performance of passing conversions back to GDN? Um, yes, I do. Because if you're doing some, first of all, you can test lifetime value by passing it. Okay, you want to know how, how much money each person basically converted and which placements you can bid higher. So if you're that level of advancement where, for example, with my gym, what we test is actually the placements that people not only left a lead, I'm testing multiple conversions yeah. with Facebook and with Google. So a lead, a lead conversion is nice, but I want to know which 
targeting in specific, uh, the, the, the person who actually subscribed or bought the product actually came from, and that's where I'm doing optimization. Because I know that I'm not running for, for like a short period campaigns, like a Black Friday campaign or something like that, yeah. I wouldn't do it. But if, if I'm running a campaign for like six months or something like that, definitely, dude, I want to know the specific targeting that someone actually made a purchase, yeah. and maybe then the retention brought them back, and then he's, he's buying out more. So, so just to tack on to that, though, are, because you own the gym for LTV, are you tracking like how long that person stays as definitely, a member definitely. and then adding that to the LTV? Definitely. We're posting back everything. Yeah. So the CRM actually, every time a user is subscribed or something like that, it posts it back. And yeah. then we know I, I have like the conversions uh, segmented out. So I know that that's a placement where, for example, 100 leads came from. But that, that's a placement where 20 leads came from. And I have like. 10 out of them became yeah. members or something like that. And, and, and another placement would be like a placement with like uh, two times LTV than the other ones okay, because cool. I'm in the LTV game. Yeah, absolutely. So we still got some time left, so keep the questions coming. Also, keep upvoting them if there are questions that you really like. What products is this tested on? So back Oh to my God, it's tested on everything, guys. I've tested. White hat, black hat, crypto campaigns. Um, it's it's hair removal, it's skin, it's diet, it's legion, it's it's. Uh, I don't even like, dude. It's like everything. retail clothing, um, surfboards. I've tested <laughs> everything. Basically, is there anything it hasn't worked with then? <laughs> uh, I can tell you something that's interesting. Uh, if I co if I'm comparing branding campaigns, yeah. which I know that's not as interesting as performance, but I can tell you that by advertising on GDN, I, I got really different results and PR, organic PR, after spending $2,000 yeah. in GDN, which is something I didn't get even after like 20,000 in Facebook. So that's that's a good. Point and case study. Nice. So, what about smart campaigns for shopping? Um, first, first of all, a big opportunity right there because the inventory is great. Like most people didn't really move there because you have to set up a merchant uh, thing and stuff. Right. Um, it's it's really it's really a big opportunity. I, I highly suggest it. Uh, we've been mainly talking about the display network, that's the shopping network, which is a whole complete uh, deal, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Are there any good resources that the audience, that you know, that the audience can have their hands on? Um, not that I can really... Not that you're going to give up? <laughs> okay, uh, does your G GDN strategies, you made mention of apply, of apply in the exact same way to YouTube ads? Um, can this apply to YouTube ads as well? Um, Okay, so I, I need to understand if that person asked about how, it, it, choosing uh, YouTube as a placement inside GDN or running video ads, true view inside YouTube. Okay, so basically, um, it, it, really, it really depends. A lot of the GDN traffic is going to come from YouTube, and every time a specific placement or a specific site would give me a lot of traffic, I always like to segment it into another campaign and watching how that specific placement uh, performs, because a lot of times when you're getting so, much, so many clicks from a specific placement, then the other placements wouldn't have a, a fair chance of really delivering. Yeah. So that's something I do. Uh, but yes, if you're choosing YouTube as a placement for like banner ads, uh, like generic GDN ads, yeah. then yeah, everything applies to there. Okay, there you have it. Uh, and, also, and also, I have to say, video campaigns inside YouTube, I've seen tons of people that are banking right now, okay? So it's performance, positive ROI on YouTube. Yeah. Guys that are running e-com, yeah. e-com products, Gidea products, stuff like that, yeah. inside YouTube, converting with good ROI. Yeah. Is it retargeting based off of that or not, not just right retargeting? Cold traffic using the new sequence, which is in beta yeah. uh, thing. So you you guys can try that. Yeah, I think Tom Breeze, one of our other speakers, is actually speaking exactly on that too. Mm -hmm. um, so on the last slide about scaling, you showed us an image with a good percentage of unknown age people. If you avoid that, how can you scale? First of all, if you have a geo that is big enough, like the states, then you always have. Uh, 
ju just like audience that is not unknown, first of all. Second of all, uh, I didn't say to avoid it. I just said you should open it up in a different campaign, lowball the bids, yeah. just to normalize. Because usually, my experience with unknown uh, age or gender audiences has been that the CPA or CPL has been a bit higher. Mm. So that's how I just normalize it. Okay. And also, that, that, that way I could really segment the, the conversions according to the age, and I'm yeah. giving the... Just to two separate ad yeah, sets, though? Yeah, just super, su okay. yeah, two separate campaigns, yeah. Do you have one recommendation for pushing... G oh, <laughs> do you have... Okay, we'll, we'll go to the top one. Do you have any tips for leveraging the ad experiments features? Um, yeah, but that's like a whole talk. Whole nother talk. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll save that not, for not, AWA. Not something for like a couple of minutes. So do you have one recommendation for pushing GDN budget? I want to see max results. Um, so a quick few tips of, according to that. We, I just had a talk on the breakout stage with uh, someone. I would try, and that's why I call myself the wolf. OK, you've asked, OK? Because my, my methods are a bit um, experimental, let's say, OK? So what I would do, just, just so I wouldn't like ruin my current campaign, because a lot of times when you scale budgets and stuff, the ROI goes down and or your, yeah. your campaign just changes. I would try basically opening up a different account. Yeah. OK, just opening up a different account. Uh, and also remember that inside GDN, you have tons of inventory. And that's why you can just like push it, push it, push it. Try and just opening up to more than like the generic news sites that you already know. Try and open up to basically different types of targeting. And that's why I also said use observation lists because then you can basically really, you, you don't have to push your campaign's budget. You just open up another campaign on the same account and just push it, push it, push it. Yeah. Because it's a new targeting, a new everything. Seeing a trend here. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have you had any success with uh, native on Google? Yes, it's doing. We've talk, you talked about it in your past speeches at AWA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been talking about search remarketing, native search remarketing. Yeah. Uh, that's something I do. Uh, you can look it up on uh, Affiliate World. Yeah, on the YouTube, YouTube, on YouTube, YouTube page. channel, you can find um, it. Basically, uh, it's, it, it's a method that really works. So basically, every time a user gets inside your site, and then it doesn't matter where. It, it could be Facebook traffic. And then that person searches inside Google for anything. Then I would open up a campaign with a different domain, unbranded, that would just rate that uh, category of products or something like that. So yeah. yeah, that's definitely something I do. OK, cool. We've got time for probably two more. GDM for SaaS does not work. Change my mind. I like it. It does. Go on. <laughs> um, no, basically, I've seen a lot of campaigns that render for a while, so yeah. I know it works. Yeah. yeah so. Okay. So, do, do you use the same GDN strategies you made to mention of when running U video YouTube ads with Google? Um, we've been talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which type of which type of niche do you recommend starting with in Google, GDN, Black Hat, or White Hat? Uh, so first of all, I would always suggest going White Hat completely, just because of uh, the sustainability of the, the campaign. And basically, if you want to really use the, 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 the stuff that I told you, you're not really running just to make the quick money and stuff. You want to create, uh, basically, buy the data, make decisions. Right scale the campaigns and optimize them. So basically, everything I've talked about applies uh, basically more to white hat campaigns. Yeah. But you can use that on uh, stuff. What, what's a realistic amount for a budget for buying the data? For huh? Buying the data. What's a realistic amount oh, for that, someone? That really changes according to your, to, to your conversion rate. White hat, if you're, lead if gen. You're, if you're uh, running white hat, lead gen, yeah. then the budget should be a lot lower than yeah. if you're running uh, white hat e-com. OK. So because, just because the conversion rate is going to be a lot lower. Right. Uh, there, there was, oh my god, so many questions. But we, we, there, there was a question, uh, just one last question that I'm going to answer on about conversion tracking. Okay? Sure. I've talked about it on the smaller stage. Google, and the Google AI really rewards um, uh, 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 when you implement tons of conversion tracking. So most sites inside Google, um, the, 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 basically, the, the guys that use the, the conversion tracking are not using it as much as or in the same way that they are using Facebook, meaning that inside Facebook, you optimize a lot of events. You have the lead event, the purchase, the add to cart, everything. If you do that inside Google, 
the, the AI would basically reward you with higher quality scores, and that means that the CPCs are going to be lower and your average positions are going to be higher, and that's something I do. So even if your, your site is a Legion site, implement a conversion campaign for the average time that a user spends on site, or even yeah. if it's a blog or something like that. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Everyone, please give it a round of applause for Maor. Thank you. Thank you, sir.